Can you hear that? Give me a moment. Hello everyone, welcome back. Dome here and this video is going to be the first video of a new series called Plugin Spotlight. In this series, I'm going to show you plugins that in my opinion are really exceptional, are plugins that you should have in your toolbox, in your plugins folder. And they are plugins that in my opinion, you should check out. And we're starting out with a killer plugin that just came out and this is the black box HG2MS. Spoiler alert, it's incredible, let's check it out. So when I saw this plugin come out recently, I was like, I yes, I want to try it as soon as possible, make a video, show it to you guys. Because the thing is, I have the hardware black box HG2. And by now, if you're following this channel, you know that I'm a huge, huge fan of the black box AG2, both the hardware and the plugin. I've actually made a video comparing the two. If you haven't checked it out, I'm gonna link it right here. But this plugin brings so many new things to the table that actually make me want to have this plugin as a hardware unit as well. But enough talking, let's try it out and let me show you how it sounds, okay? So here it is. It's a monster. There are so many new things in it and the truth is I had to play with it and immediately I fell in love. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Plugin Alliance. They don't know I'm doing this. I just wanted to share this with you because I was really blown away. I've already talked about this on my Instagram stories. Let's listen to it, okay? So. I have a pop mix here that I'm going to use this. The biggest change in the MS version of the plugin is that obviously it's MS, so you can process the mid signal differently to the side signal, so you can get really, really wide mixes. You have a lot of control over your stereo field. And this is actually something that I would really love to have in hardware. In order to do this in hardware, I need to do some really complex routing, have an MS decoder and all these things, but let's see how this sounds, okay? So I'm going to go straight away into MS mode because in stereo, I've already done a video. You can check it out if you're interested. I'm going to activate MS and I'm going to disengage the parameter link so that we have control over the mid and side signals separately. So let's have a listen. And these are the standard moves that I do on the hardware as well. I just add a little bit of pentode, I drive the triode a little bit, and then I'm turning up the triode as well. And we get this lovely sound of the transformers with the black box. And the plugin is very, very close. Like I said, check the video if you want to check it out yourselves. But now I can do this in MS, which means I can warm up the mid signal in a different way than the side signal. But there's more than this. And I was expecting just MS capabilities, <laughs> but I was wrong. And I'm so happy that I was wrong because I couldn't believe that they would add this section here that is really mind blowing. Let's add some air to my sides, make this pop track a little bit more you know, open and airy. Just a side signal. Okay, so like I said, these are my typical settings uh, when I want to add just a tiny bit of color to my master bus with the hardware unit. Now I'm going to activate the saturation circuit, okay? This is parallel saturation.
yeah, I mean, instant black box goodness. This sound is, <laughs> for me, it's, it's so familiar by now. It's part of my master bus sound. You know, it has become part of my sound and it's something that I cannot live without anymore. This plugin gives you that. It gives me that oomph, a lot of richness to the sound. And I like the fact that I now can add more saturation to the mids because sometimes I don't want to add the parallel saturation to the sides necessarily because especially with a track like this, the sides include some airy elements, some top percussion, the backing vocals. Maybe I don't want to saturate this too much, but maybe I want to do something else I'm going to show you. Let's have a listen with and without. I'm going to also explain some parameters here, but again, I want you to focus on the sound and what it does for us, okay? Without it? I'll be honest with you, I would be happy if that was it, if that was the end of the story. But that's not even the beginning. I'm going to try and make this video as short as possible, but honestly, I'm really excited about this and I think you can tell by now. Let me show you what's really cool about this. What Plugin Alliance and uh, Analog Design did with this version of the plugin is they added a filter for the saturation circuit, which means let me explain what it does, because it's not so hard. First of all, you can have a high pass filter, which means the parallel saturation is going to affect only the frequencies that are over the frequency that you set here, which you set it right here, actually. So if you don't want to affect the low end, this could be the right choice for you. Now, if you want to focus on a specific range of frequencies, then you can use this option here, a bandpass filter, and then you can really, really find the range that you're interested in saturating and just enhance this. It could be your vocals, it could be your guitars. I'm going to show you a rock track after this and it's really, really cool. You know, you have so many options. The normal is this one and the original plugin, but also the hardware unit that I have right here, it has a low, a flat and a high setting, which means low accentuates the low end and the high just you know, accentuates the high end. And that's really cool. But this is way more versatile. You can even say, I want to use this bandstop filter, which basically says, okay, do you want to completely leave out the mids out of the equation? You might want to use this, set this around, I don't know, 1K, and then you have almost like a smiley curve for your saturation circuit. And of course, then we have the low pass filter. I would use that if I wanted to you know, enhance the low end or the low mids in the low end. But I wanted to explain it to you. The most important thing is the sound. I'm going to try and find that kick drum first with this one and then add the saturation. And that's very easy to do because they've also added a solo button here. So you can hear just the saturation circuit. Okay, let's have a listen. Okay. All right. Let's make it sharp. I hope you're wearing headphones now because when I switch off the solo, we're going to get all the goodness. Let's have a listen. Do you hear that low end? Do you hear that kick drum with the sub bass? Listen to this, it's incredible. Give me a moment. Yeah, I mean, this doesn't sound like EQing. This doesn't sound like anything else. It has a very specific sound. I can associate it with the black box sound. Eric, Rob, if you're listening, can we also have this in a hardware unit at some point? 
To be honest with you, this sounds amazing. And uh, I mean, it, that's why I wanted to have this as the first episode of this series, because it's just remarkable what it does to the sound. Okay, let's go to the sides now. Of course, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Now let's go and add a bit of saturation to the sides. Okay, these frequencies, yes. And again, like with the hardware and the plug in the original black box HG2, you see, we're not adding huge amounts of gain to get this perceived loudness. Now this mix sounds more open, it sounds more alive, it sounds like it's moving more, even though I didn't add like 5, 6 dBs of gain, you know, check it out, check the meter here, I invite you to check the meter and check what happens. Let's try the mid frequencies here. It's back in vocals. And you know, you also get this really nice air from the air circuit. And the great thing about the plugin is that if you want to change the amount of the air in the hardware unit, you have to open it up and use the trims to change this. Sometimes I go back and forth because sometimes I like more, sometimes I like less, and I really have to open the unit physically and do this. But here we also have a calibration, so you can have like dark mode, normal mode, and bright mode. So this will give you a different character. Let's have a listen. And the density, as far as I understand, drives the tubes more. You get a thicker sound, but it doesn't really change the overall volume, which is great. Let's have a listen. And because now this plugin is TMT enabled, you can have all the good stuff that we have on pretty much every plugin alliance uh, modern plugin. You can have like a mono maker, so you can say, I want to have this track being mono up to, let's say, 80 hertz, and you have a stereo width. You can also do parallel processing straight in the plugin, which is really cool. Let's try that actually. So for this one, I would go with more aggressive settings and just blend it in. Let's try it. Let's have some fun. Okay, let's blend it in now. I don't want to sound overexcited, but I am. 
uh, this brings a smile to my face. Why? Because this is what really expensive pieces of analog gear do to your mix. <laughs> That's what they do. They make it sound better without adding tons of gain. Uh, not necessarily. Gain from analog equipment is not a bad thing. I'm not a fan of level matching everything. You don't need to do this if you know what you're doing. Now, I want to switch to a different project that's a rock track. I want to show you what you can do with the mid side and the filters with some big guitars, some drums. So entirely different arrangement. Let's try it out. Yeah, guitars. Mid signal. Yes. Ooh. Oh, wow. Can you hear that? Okay, that's, that's pretty amazing. Let's try these guitars, because they're on the sides. Okay, let's level match a little bit, come on. I mean, I don't know what to say. It makes the sound bigger. That's all there is to it. It's it's bigger with no side effects. It doesn't eat up the transients. It doesn't uh, add any unpleasant distortion. Now, let's say that I don't want to saturate these vocals. I can go here and just use the band stop. And I can completely take the vocals out of the equation. Yeah, it makes the mix come alive, man. This is what I'm looking for for this kind of a processor, you know. I'm looking to get excitement. I'm looking to get a much fuller sound. Check out the snare, check out the low end, the bass, the guitars. The guitars just scream when you add the saturation.
I mean, I think you get the point. This is a plugin that I can guarantee it will work on pretty much every music genre, from pop, from rock, from house, you name it. Anything that has transients and needs this kind of big sound, I think you can do wonders with this plugin. And of course, I wouldn't hesitate using it on individual channels as well. I would use it on kick drums, I would use it on vocals, I would use it on synths, pretty much everything. You can't go wrong with this plugin. Every time I talk about the black box is that, yeah, you can slap it anywhere you want and it will still make it sound better. <laughs> so, I hope you enjoyed this first episode of Plugin Spotlight. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Black Box HG2MS. You know, honestly, I think it's a plugin that you should have in your toolbox. If you have the original Black Box HG2, it's a no-brainer. I think you need to upgrade to this version. I don't think I'm going to use the other version anymore. I'm going to only use my hardware black box as my old version. In the comments down below, let me know which plugin you'd like me to feature next on the plugin spotlight. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because that really, really helps. And share this video with everyone you know they might like some tube color in their lives. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.